you can go back and watch it. Uh, all right. So we're talking about conduction, convection, and radiation. And some of you probably have a little bit of knowledge about this. You've done it before. Um, you learned a little bit about in fifth grade and probably a little bit in third grade. So today our essential questions are, what methods can be used to demonstrate thermal energy transfers? If you feel like I know that, like I could answer that now. Uh, so if you are quizzed today, which questions would you already know the answer to? If you think you already know it, you could take one of these check marks and just move it over to here. If you feel like, okay, I could not answer that question, move the question mark over to here. And the purpose of this is just to get you thinking about, like, what do you need to know by the end of this? Our second question is, what are conduction, convection, and radiation? And that should say, what is conduction, convection, and radiation? Include examples. So if you could give me examples of what conduction, convection, and radiation are, and you could explain what they are, you would put a green check mark. If you cannot, you would put the red question mark. If I was taking notes on paper, I would probably write both of these questions down, or at least the key words down, such as thermal energy transfer and conduction, convention, convection, and radiation, if I didn't have this set of slides in front of me. you guys think on that for a second. All right, if you would switch to slide three. So if you are not able to see my screen, switch to slide three. Yes, is that me here? Was this on science? Yes, we're doing science right now. What's this one called? Heat transfer. So we're on slide three. So we have, what is thermal energy? So thermal energy is energy that is generated by a source and measured by heat. So we can measure heat. How do we measure heat? You can either type it in the chat box or come off mute. How do we measure heat? So if you can't find the slides, just follow along with me right now. And just take notes. Yes, we take the temperature. What do you what tool do we use to take temperature? What tool do we use to take temperature? A thermometer? Correct. Yes, we will use a thermometer. So what is thermal energy? Thermal energy is, and you type that right here in your little box or write down your definition. So what is thermal energy? Thermal energy is heat. heat. Um, but it's heat energy. I want you to understand that it's a little bit different than just heat. It's heat energy. It is okay if you have to type out of that little box. You can make the box bigger by sliding it down if you need to. Thermal energy is heat energy. I would even add it is measurable. You have to be able to measure it. So what is an example of a source of thermal energy? So yes, right here we have examples of kinetic energy and chemical energy, but our sources, a source is where something comes from. So a source of uh, kinetic energy or chemical energy, what do you think? 
You can use these pictures as clues. It's okay if your canvas is not loading. L while you do that, let me see if I can pull it up really quick. And I will uh, put the link for you to copy in the chat box. But again, if you cannot, all you have to do is take notes on a piece of paper. And it will be okay. It takes me to teams. Yes, I'll press it. Okay, so you are probably pressing... So you are probably in our week of assignments. You're pressing on the live session side. You gotta actually press on the assignment for this. So, for instance, my computer's running really yeah. slow this morning. So you click on this week. We have two columns here. We have the live session and office hours. So this will always take you to either a recording or a live session. The assignments, okay. the actual assignments are going to be in the second column. So that's going to be this one right here. The heat okay. transfer live. All right. So what are some of our examples? Let me check my chat box. So some examples of a source of thermal energy is the sun as well as a stove top fire a light bulb anything that gives off heat thermal energy is heat energy anything that gives off heat um, chemical energy would be things like a fire because fire is burning something. And when things burn, that's a chemical. If you take your hands, I want everyone right now, stop what you're doing, put your hands together, and I want you to rub your hands together as fast as you can. I know I do this when I get really cold. So I want everyone doing that right now. Rub your hands together. If you are creating a kinetic energy, that heat, yeah, that, when, you oh, rub, when you rub your hands together, you are creating kinetic energy. That is a source of heat. That's why people do that when their hands are cold, is it warms up your hands. Anything, the word kinetic means things are moving. So that is a source of heat. We can actually measure with the right tool. Yes, it is friction, but friction is a, is a, a kinetic energy, and that gives off heat. All right, so switch to slide four. Give everyone a chance to switch to slide four. You could also be just writing notes on paper if you need to do that. So based on the image on the right, how does conduction transfer heat? So let's take a look at this image. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger on my screen so that you guys can see it. By zooming in, if it will let me, it may not let me. So if you ever need to zoom in, you can use this little magnifying glass. All right, so taking a look at this image. So we see where how someone is holding a pan and it's labeled. So, first, let's start with conduction. So, I see conduction. It has a little arrow, and it's pointing to the handle. So, if you have a metal pot, and if you've ever cooked, the handle, if it's made out of metal, can get really hot. Even if that's not the part touching the stove, which is your heat source, when it is if the heat will transfer through metals. And we're going to talk about things that are conductors and insulators, especially next week. But if you look at this word conduction, conduction has to do with conductors. Things that are good conductors are metal, which is why you know, you'll hear, you know, 
you, if, I'm sure a lot of you have heard, you don't want to uh, hold a, like a, something metal outside if there's a lightning storm, right? Because light, metal is a conductor. Yes, we're going to be talking about electromagnetic energy as well. Um, not next week, but the week after, mahogany. But conduction is when things transfer through. And it's um, through a conductor. And it has to do with contact. Things are touching each other. If we set this pot down on the stovetop, that would also be conduction. Yes, Zoe? And after Zoe, Zamir, I see your hands up too. Okay, so um, for what I put on there, I put a toaster because um, when you, with the bread inside of the toaster, it's heating up yes. the bread. Yes, that is a great example. Zamir? Did you have a question? Okay, I see your hands down. Uh, when I was like, when I rub my hands, I used to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like your hands get really, really hot. Yes, they do, and it's when things are touching. So yeah, then, that's really cool. It is really cool. So then we're looking at radiation. Now I know in the summer, and even in the spring, I put sunscreen on my face. And if I'm going anywhere at the pool or anywhere else, I'm putting sunscreen on my arms, my legs. Um, but even sometimes in the winter, if I'm going to be outside a lot, I put sunscreen on my kids. And that's because my daughter, Chloe, she burns really easily. Like she, she will be out in the sun. And I always joke around that if she stayed out and laid out in the moon too long, she would get burnt. So she gets burnt really easily. Um, and that is because of radiation. So if you ever look at a sunscreen bottle, and if you have one, go get one and look at it. I'm going to see if I can grab one. I can show you all really quick. Alright. So, I have my sunscreen bottle. Let me turn on my camera. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second so you all can see me. So, if you can see me. I have my sunscreen bottle. Oh, my background's blocking it. And on my sunscreen bottle, it talks about SPF 50. But down at the bottom, I'm going to turn off my background. And if you have sunscreen, you know, you can go look at it later so that you can see what I'm talking about. But if you look at my sunscreen bottle down at the very bottom, it says something about UVA and UVB light. So on sunscreen, it will talk about that. And the reason is that UV, does anyone know what that stands for? What UV stands for? Anyone know? You can type it in the chat box or come off mute. Kylie? Um, ultra yes, ultraviolet. And ultraviolet. it actually is ultraviolet radiation. And so that's why we're talking about it. So I'm going to share my screen again so you can see our PowerPoint. So that radiation. Sunscreen protects us from the sun. The sun gives off radiation. That heat is part of it but the heat is from the sun it also like radiation can travel through something so that's why like sunglasses will also have uv coating on them to protect your eyes from uv light or radiation so radiation is traveling through things through the air the sun is the, its radiation travels through space so whenever you see radiation, something is radiating off of it, that means it's coming off of it. Think about the rays of the sun. It rays out. It's radiation. So in this example, the heat is radiating off of the stovetop. And then we'll talk about convection. 
So convection is something that happens inside of fluids as well as inside of the gas. So heat, you know, we were talking about um, density and how things that are low density are light and they rise. And those are things that are get warmer. So things that get warm rise up, just like smoke rises, heat rises. So that rotation of heat rising, and then it will sink as it gets cold or, he or denser or heavier. And it creates this circular motion. That is convection. And that is a type of thermal energy. This happens in our oceans, but it also happens when you boil water. And it also happens inside of like a hot air balloon. We talked a lot about hot air balloons and it happens inside of a hot air balloon. Ah, computer, stop being weird. So I'm going to zoom back and look at our screen. So based on the image on the right, how does conduction transfer heat? So conduction transfers heat by what? Think about it. He's holding it. He's touching it. So I would say by touch. Based on the image on the right, how does radiation transfer heat? Think about it radiates off. We're thinking about those sun rays. It's traveling through. So I would say radiation transfers heat by... What would y'all say? I might say something like moving through the air. I might even put my example of the rays of the sun. It travels through space. It travels through the air. There is space. I might make my text a little bit smaller so I can see it. All right. Based on the image on the right, how does convection transfer heat? So it makes those circles. That's the biggest thing I want you to notice is it makes a circular pattern. So it transfers heat by circulating. If you use a fan, like if you have a fan in the middle of your living room or your bedroom and you turn that fan on, the reason that it works is it forces the air to move or circulate. Uh, if we were going to circulate around a room, we might all stand up and move in a circle around the room. Circulating is moving around in a circular motion. So con that convection moves in a circular rotation. All right, switch to slide five. So we're going to touch a little bit on the law of conservation of energy. And while that sounds like a really big word, it's really, or phrase, it's not that scary. So the law of conservation of energy. So let's break that apart. We know what energy is. Energy is heat. Heat is energy. So the law of conservation of heat. So we know energy means heat. So the law, when you think about laws, those are rules. Uh, so the rules of conservation of heat. So conservation means to conserve something. I tell my kids that we need to conserve our food and not eat 10 snacks on the first day I go to the grocery store and then have no snacks for the rest of the week because I'm not going to go buy more fruit snacks or more other snacks that they want to eat. So they need to conserve their snacks. When we had the hurricane, I think it was like three years ago, and we lost power, and our whole power lines came down everywhere, I wanted to make sure we had enough water and we had enough food for the few days without power and food that I could cook or make without actually needing to use my stove because we didn't have any electricity. 
So I had said we had to conserve our food, meaning we weren't going to eat it all on that first day. We were going to save it. Um, I like to conserve my money to make sure that I have enough in case something bad happens, an emergency happens. I need to conserve that. So conservation, that word conserve, means to save up or to protect. So the law or the rule of protecting heat or energy. So tells us that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So if you were to create something, you make something out of nothing or you take th things and put it together. But in this case, it's talking about creating something from nothing. Uh, and it also cannot be destroyed. But you're like, well, I create heat when I turn on the stove, but you're not. You're really just transferring heat. When you turn on the stove, you're taking electricity and you're turning it in. So the sun, you might say, okay, that creates heat. It doesn't. It transfers the energy from the sun. The sun is made up of a certain amount of energy. Um, and that energy gets transferred to us through radiation. But it has a certain amount of energy. So energy is transferred. It does not get created. It does not get destroyed. When And you'll learn more in seventh grade that we'll, you'll get even deeper into this topic. So this is something that you'll do far past just this year. Oh, let's check my time. Okay, we have about 15 minutes, so I want to move a little bit faster. So the air above the stove will what? Where do you think that air above the stove, that heat, what do you think is going to happen to it? And it's okay if you get these wrong right now. Just make a prediction. So I'm going to say the air above the stove will... Do you think it'll get warmer or colder? So I know if I put Coldy. my hands... If I put Coldy. my hands over the top of a stove and the air above it, it gets warmer over it. So in the winter, sometimes, like, if you want to... If you have a fire or you, if you stand by your stove, if you're, like, cooking something, you might put your hands over it because it's warmer over it. The hair above... The air above the stove will be will uh, be warmer. The person's hand will get hotter or burn if it gets too hot, right? The burner on the stove will get hot. All right, slide six. So conduction, the movement of heat or electricity through matter. So when it says it's through matter, it means it something has to be touching. So conduction is the movement or transfer. I'm going to use transfer of heat through, or I'm actually going to say by touch. Because so I want to say it in a little different way than the slide said it, so that I make sure I understand it. The image, uh, how does the image to the left show conduction? So look at this picture. You see a metal spoon inside of a hot coffee cup. You see the steam coming up off the cup that shows you that it is hot. The image shows conduction because the spoon is heating up the heat or energy is being transferred from the hot coffee to the spoon. You can write this in your own words. You can ch change it up how you want to explain it. Either one is fine. So I know some of you are using the chat box to kind of chat and talk. Make sure you're taking notes and you're following along. All right, move to slide seven when you're ready. So conduction, convection, and radiation. So here we're looking at convection. Convection is that kind of circular motion, that circulation. Convection, the transfer of thermal energy through a fluid, a gas or a liquid. 
So put it in your own words. Convection is the transfer or movement of energy, heat, through liquid or gas. You notice I'm not copying exactly what is here. And that's because when you put things in your own words, it really will help you understand uh, what it means. How does this image show convection? So you can see the circulation, the circular motion that is occurring in this image. Red hot rises, heat rises, just like smoke it comes from fire. Smoke rises. Heat rises. When things rise, they cool off because it's colder up higher and they will sink back down. So when things get hot and then they get cold, their density changes. And we learned that density changes like where things are. Remember that rainbow that we were talking about? So when we're talking about density, things that are heavy and cold cold and heavy sink down. Hot and light is less dense and it rises. So air has different densities and as you change the temperature, it creates this circular motion. This is why water boils. Because of that circular motion is what creates the bubbles that happen when you boil water. So hot fluid rises while cold fluid sinks. So how does this image show convection? This image shows convection because... Oh gosh, my phone doesn't stop right now. Oh my goodness, okay. The image shows convection because the heat creates a circular motion. That circular motion is convection. When you have anything that is circulating, that creates convection. All right, you can move on to slide eight. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Energy is transmitted in waves of a stream of particles. So that's moving through space. It travels through space and other types of matter. So radiation is the transfer of heat through space. Hmm. Radiation is the transfer of heat through space. How does the image show radiation? The image shows radiation because the sun's energy or heat is transferred to earth through space. Um, I'll try and slow down. I'm trying to make sure I finish by 1045 for you all. But I'll give you a minute to catch up. Me too, Christina. I'm tired. It's been a sleepy day. All right, let's get a slide nine. So this one, you're just um, grabbing the image and moving it around. So conduction, which of these goes with conduction? So I want you to try this on your own. This first one says hot fluid rises when cold fluid sinks. So is that conduction, convection, or radiation? You can type it in the chat box. Hot fluid rises while cold fluid sinks. Conduction, convection, or radiation? So Trey, is hot fluid rising and cold fluid sinking conduction, convection, or radiation? Is 
it's radiation. It is not. So that hot fluid rising and cold fluid sinking creates that circular pattern. So hot air rises, cold air sinks, or hot fluid rises, cold fluid sinks. It creates a circular motion, and that is convection, convection. Our next one, the movement of heat or electricity through matter. So matter is a substance. This is not through space. This is through matter. Is this conduction or radiation? So Christina, the movement of heat through or electricity through matter. So matter can be a metal or it can even be hands, but things are going to be touching in this one. Conduction. Good job. It is conduction. Great job. And then our last one, you know, process of elimination. Uh, energy transmitted in waves. So that waves. I know I've seen a lot of you talking about the electromagnetic wave, and we're going to definitely be learning a lot more about that. Um, but yes, it is waves of particles. And it is through space, even though this doesn't say through space, and that is radiation. All right, and then you can move to slide 10. Okay. So I'm gonna let you guys do slide 10 on your own. It should be pretty simple. An example of radiation is transformed into other forms of energy. Look at the picture. What do you guys think? Yes. Try that on your own. Yes, Zoe? Yes, ma'am. Oh, wait, never mind, because it's the question. Yeah, so you are going to think about, you know, the answer is not that it is just radiation. So radiation coming from the sun, what is something that needs that? There is a life form that could not survive on Earth. If it did not have sun rays. Can I say something about radiation? Yes, please. Uh, there's radiation in a microwave. And they have to use like the little circles on the microwave to keep the radiation from getting out. Yes, that is very true. And uh, talking about that, the reason your food gets hot inside of a microwave, is it sending those, that radiation, those waves through your food? That Yes, they're electromagnetic, and that's why a microwave is called a microwave, because it's sending waves of radiation through your food. But back to this radiation, plants, or in the case of photosynthesis, and excuse me, I have a question. Yes. Why is the stove called, I mean, an oven called, uh, why are they call an oven? Why are they call an oven a stove and stuff, too? Why do so they call it that? The oven is the part that you, like, put, like, if you're going to bake a cake in. The stove is the top where you put, like, a pot to cook on top of. I don't know why okay. they got the name that they have. All right, so slide 11. I'm trying to get us through this. We're almost done. Slide 11. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Examples of conduction or direct contact. Touching a metal spoon in a cup. Putting a heating pad on your back. So again, things touching. Feeling the heat from a hot poker in a fireplace. So if you were to actually touch it. Um, placing a hand on top of a basket of hot rolls. So when you touch the top of the rolls, that heat that if it came out of the oven is conduction. You have to have direct contact. You have to be touching. I understand being tired of typing, Trent. Um, just try to stick with us so that you can go back and finish it later. So list one more example of conduction. So think about something touching. 
I gave us one earlier, remember when we rubbed our hands together? I know my daughter last night, she came in and she crawled in my bed at like 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know if you all ever did that when you were younger or if you still do that. That's fine. Yes. Um, and I knew she was in there, one, because I felt her body heat. So when she snuggled up against me, that is direct contact and that is conduction. When you hug someone and you're cold and they're warm, they're transferring their heat to you. That body heat is conduction. So a hug is an example of conduction. My little sister does that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I you know, I tell my kids if they're ever afraid at night, they are always welcome to come in my room. Oh, it is nothing to be ashamed of because Sometimes there's been nights where I'm like, you know what? I kind of want them in my room because I don't want to be by myself. And I'll be like, hey, come sleep with mommy tonight. So it is okay. Yes, if you need to leave, you can. Um, I'm going to finish these last couple slides. Um, so conduction, convection, and radiation. Macaroni rising and falling in a pot of boiling water. That circulation. Lava lamps, if you've ever seen a lava lamp, that happens. So it the lava lamp has the heat at the bottom, and it causes the lava to get hot. And when it gets hot, it rises up. When it rises up, it moves away from that heat source of that bowl. So it cools off and it sinks. Then it gets hot and it rises. Then it cools and it sinks. It hot and rises, cools and sinks. A uh, hot magma. We're going to be talking more about that later when we talk about um, our a little bit. We're going to be learning about earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff. So we'll learn about magma. And that is also convection. Hot air rising in the atmosphere and then sinking. So it's colder when you go to the mountains. Bye, Mahogany. I'll see you in office hours. Um, it is cold in the mountains. When you drive up into the mountains, the temperature gets colder. And that is because it is higher in the atmosphere. The mountains go high up into the atmosphere, so it gets colder. So hot air will rise, and then when it goes up into the atmosphere that's cold, it gets cold and it sinks back down. And this causes that circulation. So thinking about that, we have the attic of a house is normally hottest because of convection, the heat rises to the attic because heat rises. So the attic is going to be hotter because the heat rises up. All right, slide 13. I know I'm trying to, I'm speeding up. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go through all of them. So if you want to stay, you can stay. Um, if you feel like, okay, I got this, I can go, then you can, you know, if you have to go, you can go. I know you don't have an 11 o'clock meeting, so if you can just stick in here, I will be done by 11. So examples of radiation, waves or particles of energy, laying out on the beach. Again, you need that sunscreen to protect you from those UV radiation. Holding your hand over a burning match without touching it. So when you hold your hand over something, like a fire or a match or a candle that is the heat that is moving through that space in between your hand because there's a space between your hand and the fire or your hand and the stove or the hand and the candle so it is radiating those rays are coming off that heat is coming off it's radiating off and that's radiation uh, holding your hand over a light bulb as long as you don't touch it so if i put my hand over the top of a light bulb i can feel the heat if I touch the light bulb, now I went from convection, a feeling, I mean from radiation, excuse me, to conduction. Because as soon as you make contact, that becomes conduction. So, talking about the candle. If I put my hand over the top of a candle and I feel the heat, that is radiation. It's radiating off. The heat radiates off. There's space. As soon as I take my hand, if I put my hand into the candle. I don't know why I would do that. That's a really bad idea. Don't try that at home. 
um, that becomes conduction because there's contact. Conduction has contact. Radiation has space because the sun travels through space. Once heat is transmitted by direct contact, it is no longer radiation. It is no longer radiation because it is not traveling through space. It is conduction. All right, so 14. All you're going to do here is you're going to grab these words and so feeling the warmth of a bonfire. Is that conduction, convection, or radiation? So I'm going to say it's radiation because I'm feeling the warmth. I'm not putting my hand into the fire. You're going to move it off. If there's a green check mark, you got it correct. You can just move it off anywhere. If I had chosen wrong and I put convection, it's going to have a red X. So you can do this on your own as a great way to practice. I got a question. Is this a quiz? No, this is just to help you practice. Oh. And then you'll do the same for the rest of them. You can do that on your own. And you can you know, figure out which one's correct. So you move it off and it's green, then you got it right. If it's red, you got it wrong. So, slide 15. Think about it. When electricity isn't available, so we have no electricity, explain how the location and design of a house can help control temperature using conduction, convection, and radiation. So, let's look at a house. It's different types of houses. If you have ever been in a basement, in the summer, a basement stays really cool. But in the winter, it actually stays pretty warm because it's holding in the heat. It has insulation. And we're going to talk more about that next week. But let's talk about the location of a house. If there's no electricity, the location of a house, if you want it to stay warm, would you want it in shade or would you want it in the sun and open? I know I would want it in the open because more radiation could get to the house. I also might have more windows to let in more light, let in more of that UV. Alright, slide 16. And if you don't finish slide 15 right now, that's okay. That was just to get you thinking. Alright. Last look. Study each scenario to the right. Identify each one as conduction, convection, or radiation by clicking or on the highlighted box to cover your answer. So, describe the heat transfer in the picture on the right. So, if we're cooking eggs, those eggs are cooking on, in a frying pan. Is that conduction, convection, or radiation? You can come off mute or type it in the chat box. Frying eggs. Is it the eggs are touching the pan? Conduction. Conduction. Describe the heat transfer in the wind, the Earth's oceans, and the Earth's mantle. So you see this image is a circle with little tiny circles in there. What is that? Convection. Convection. Correct. Describe how sunburns are related to heat transfer. And I'm just going to write radiation here. And it is because things are traveling through. So you can create your own examples. Alright. So on 17... You should be able to answer these questions on your own. Define conduction. Conduction is. And then give an example or two of conduction. 
Convection is, and give a few examples of convection. Radiation is, and a few examples. You can go back and use your notes to do that. Um, you do not need to turn this in. Sometimes these I'll give you and you will turn them in, but today what you are going to do is if you go back to your heat transfer assignment. So if you cannot see my screen right now, I would switch back to our Teams meeting so I can show you what you need to do. So you see what I'm grading from you today that you did this is this exit ticket. So for this exit ticket, what I would do is on a sheet of paper, write numbers one through 14. These are gonna be single word answers. You can use your notes if you need them. And you're gonna write conduction, convection or radiation from one through 13. Number 14, you're going to draw a picture that can help explain the three different energy transfers. You can either draw three different pictures or you can draw one picture, such as that pot that we held over the top. Uh, you can use your notes and you will upload that. Um, for draw, you know, if you want to type all your answers and just take a picture of your drawing, that's fine. Or you can just write one through 13 on a sheet of paper with the correct word and your drawing and upload that as a picture. So that is your assignment for today. It shouldn't take you too long. Um, and then you are done. I'm going to stay in here. So if you want to start working on this now, you are welcome to. Uh, you do not have an 11 o'clock meeting with Ms. Brown. So I'll stay in here for about 20 minutes till about 11.20. Uh, then I have a 11.30 thing I have to do. But I do have office hours tonight from 7 to 8 o'clock. So if you need me from 7 to 8, I will be available.